Hi, Tracy and Todd here today, and we're looking at the Explorer lever. We have two models to share with you today. We have our plumbable version, which also works on a water reservoir, and just our regular water reservoir version. You notice there's a little bit of height difference between the two, this one being 16 and a half inches tall, and this one being 15 inches tall. So we're going to get right into it, Todd, and let's brew a shot off of this baby. Let's brew a shot. Yes, we're going to, I'm going to use a bottomless portafilter with a triple shot basket, just for the fun of it. Using the Chiato E37 grinder, doseless grinder, electronic, you can program to do a single or double shot, whichever you prefer, or do it manually. Awesome grinder, brand new to us now. Maybe when this video is old, it won't be brand new anymore, but okay, light the hemp. Purge a little bit of the steam out of the brew group with the heat exchange, you always have a little bit there. Okay, let's get to the front of the machine. We'll take a close look here. Up top here we have a pressure gauge. This will tell you what the pressure is in the boiler. And we'll set this uh, here to be right about 0.9 to 1 bar, give or take a little bit. Over here we have the main power switch on and off. Up is on. Uh, on the side, left side here, we here's the steam wand. And uh, so you open that knob and you get steam coming out. This is a no burn steam one, so you can hold that. Also, kind of fun to notice that this steam tip is designed to work with this boiler perfectly, so that if you look over the pressure gauge, it's staying a little about about 0.6. So you can run this all day long, and that pressure won't run out. We will have other tips that you can use if you want to get more steam uh, for different size pitchers. Over here, we have a hot water wand. So that's how that works. Now you notice the. The boiler went on, or the pump went on to fill the boiler. And here's the lever we use for brewing. Raise it up to brew and push it down when you're done. There's a middle position here, but we don't recommend using that. If you want to do some pre-infusion, you can pull it up for a second like that, pre-infuse the coffee, and then go up and brew. But don't leave it in the middle position. Over here we have this uh, little light here. That illuminates whenever the boiler is actually on, so when the heating element is energized. That's the base of the front of the machine. Okay, fantastic. Yep, drip tray over here, large capacity drip tray. We've been doing a lot of brewing today. You can see that's pretty full. And uh, while we're in here, we'll take a look over here. There's an opening here you can use if you want to adjust the brew pressure. You can do it right there. When we get inside the machine, we'll go in more detail on that. Fantastic. Mm -hmm. I think, Todd, what we should do next is really show the benefits of having a prosumer machine like this, whereas you can brew and steam immediately. So what I'd like to do is be able to do a double shot, and let's show okay. how we can froth our milk and make a cappuccino. Okay, let's do that. Here's a regular cup for you, and then and I'll get you a shot glass. You have that porter filter over there? Is that the right one? It is. There you go. You can start loading that up. Thank you. Shot glass right yeah. in front of you. We'll grab the milk. Sure. And the pitcher. Always purge water out of the wand first. Push the lever down. 
Good. Stop the stop the shot. Okay. Starting to get pretty warm. So I'll lower the steam tip down to the milk a little farther. Kind of pour. Hopefully, we'll come out with something nice here. Oh, I have no doubt. Something that's good enough for the lovely Tracy. Ooh, very nice, Todd. We have a. What is that? It's like a heart. It's like a little onion. <laughs> with layers. And it's just a little macchiato. Very nice. But uh, so it's very easy to brew on this, and to steam. And when you're done. Since Tracy's here, I'll show you what the maintenance is on it. Always you have to do the maintenance. Always wipe the wand off there and blow a little steam out. Be careful she gets hot. And you take the hot water out of here to do it, you can burn yourself like I did, so be careful. Good tip. <laughs> Good tip. Now on the top of the machine, it has a passive cup warmer. It gets really nice and hot up here. But I'm going to take off the top so we can get to the water reservoir. The water reservoir holds 93 ounces. And I'm going to remove this. There's a water softener inside. And take that out. And Todd, if you want to flip the machine a little bit here, do you want to show underneath? Yeah, let's show underneath. So when you're... If you want to use this, we have it set up for the water reservoir now. It will show you what to do if you want to set it up to use with a water line hookup. And what's great about that is obviously you can just okay. turn on your machine and never have to worry about it. Metal plate in there, we'll take that out. The reservoir sits on that. Okay. Thank you, Vanna. Oh, you're welcome. And we'll turn her off. I'm just kind of. We'll hold it like this for now. Okay. Over here is a lever. That lever, turn it to the back for a reservoir and the front if you want to use a water line. Can you get that stainless steel water line? Sure and the water line itself will hook up here if you're using that. There you go. It has a nice, uh, has a 90 degree elbow piece on it there. So you basically just stick that on there and tighten that down and you're good to go. Along with the machine, we'll supply a 3 8 BSP to 3 8 flare fitting. So it's easy to get a fitting to go from there to your water line in your house. It's good to put a water softener line if you can. We recommend uh, incoming water line pressures uh, anywhere down from 5 pounds if you have a pressure regulator, or you can go up to regular steep pressure at 50, 60 pounds, which is not a problem. Also, if you're doing a water line, we recommend that you use a drain line also. Uh, that, would, that would go into here. To do that, you would, uh, Oops. you have a drip pan here. What you would have to do is drill a hole in the bottom of this, okay? And then the drip pan from there would, would empty right out into this, uh, this drip tray here. There you go. Thank you. And then we'd hook our water line, which is our drain line, which is this, right out of this fitting here. See that? And then you can run that whatever you have set up for plumbing. And that is really a nice feature because you can make coffee all day long. Yeah, it is. As long as we're oh. into that, you want to open her up a little bit more, Tom? We'll take a look inside. We'll show you the internals. What's the difference between the plumbing kit and the one that over, like the one over there that we have that uses just the reservoir. Other than that, they're the same machine. What I like about this, Todd, is once you get all this off, you're going to be able to see everything this yeah. machine has to offer. Yeah, what is nice about the X bars is once you get the, the X bar levers, once you get the, the panels off, you can get at everything. Now, another thing I, I want to show you this is a, this is a heavy duty machine. Check out the, the casing on this. Look how, how thick this stainless steel is as compared to a quarter. It's actually thicker than a quarter. That's amazing. This is a very heavy duty machine. Very nice. Yep. Okay. Get a little closer here. He's going deeper. <laughs> I always do. I want to get right into this so you can see her. 
Before you take it off completely, Todd, do you want to show everybody that little spring that's oh, yeah. located on there for the water reservoir? Sure. Can you unplug this so I don't fry myself again? Oh, I would love to. Okay. Reservoir sits on here. You have this little, little plate. this metal plate here. That's like that. Goes like that. Now, if you decide at some point you want to do the water line hookup, recommend taking up a, a tie and tying this right down, like a plastic tie or something, to hold that down to show so the uh, that switch is energized. So normally the water reservoir pushes that down, and by doing that, um, tells the machine that it has water and it can go on. Well, this machine too has safeguards built into it so that. If the water isn't present, it knows so it turns off the heating elements. So How does it risk, know? How does it know so it doesn't risk blowing out your boiler? So yep. it out. knows by the water sensor right up on top here. There's a little sensor probe that goes down into the boiler, about down around there, and that goes back to the board, which is right here, that tells it that it's low. Turns on the pump and at the same time shuts off the heating element. Uh, down here we have the parts for the plumbing kit. Has a what I like about this design, it has a solenoid valve here on the inlet side that's wired what they call in parallel with a pump. What that means is if you, when your water line comes in all that water pressure goes against this valve it stops right here. It doesn't go any farther until this pump goes on. Then it opens up the valve, the water will flow through to your pump and out. Prevents any possibility of flooding. Nice. Okay, uh, inside here we have the overpressure valve over here and the deaerator which is another nice feature removes any air from this uh, system so you don't get air locks in the pump and you can adjust your brew pressure from the front of the machine with a screwdriver through there if you want to. Up here we have the pressure stat. You control this, turn it, turn this little, looks like a gear. You turn it clockwise to raise the pressure, counterclockwise to lower the pressure. That's for just the steam pressure for the boiler. You have the pressure leaf valve over here. If it gets up around two bar or above that may go off. Vacuum leaf valve. Um, this relieves the air pressure as the boiler is heating up. Now over here we have two pipes going to the back of the brew group. Now this is, goes in the back of the, what's called the E61 group, which is the thermal siphon type of brew group, which means there's hot water circulating it through all the time. Hot water comes through the top of the boiler, in the back of the brew group, then as it cools it goes to the bottom tube, down to the bottom of the boiler. So it just kind of constantly recirculates. That's an amazing piece of work. Yes, it's been around for a long time, and it's a really functional system. As you can see, too, makes a great shot. So, mm -hmm. really fun piece of equipment to be able to have in your home, especially if you're serious about making good quality drinks. It's funny, every time we do videos, for some reason the machines always end up in pieces by the time we're done. <laughs> <laughs> but we do put it back together before yeah. we sell you one. So, until we see you again and we look uh, more at merchandise around here at Holate Love, we'll see you.